Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steve, and today, chums, for you guys, in the view of verse, it's a cup of tea with Captain Steve video. You may have seen, I've just had some Walker's French fries. Yeah, it's an English snack. There's a few others in there, like Kingdom Bueno and things. Just had some lunch. Had a little spot of lunch. We also had some Pop-Tart chocolate flavour. They were lovely. Anyway, yeah, I've got a cup of tea. Got a mug of tea on the go. My lovely merch. I've got a new range of merch on my merch store now, people. Yes. I... What the fudge range, of course. Anyhow, enough about that, enough about me. What am I bringing for you guys in the Viewerverse today? Yeah, well, there's been another Nightingale development update, people, that I want to share with you. And, um, yeah, I want to talk to you a little bit about it, people inside the Viewerverse. So, you know what? I'm going to plug in some headphones into my old laptop so um, I can listen to this and then I can pass comments as we go. Heck yes, where's my headphones? There they are. Lovely jolly. Let's jump on over onto the reaction camera into my PC world. Boom! There I go. I'm on the screen now. This is over on YouTube. That's the actual title up there. But I'll show you the channel this is on. It's on Nightingale's own channel. But let's hit play. Hey there, Realm Walkers. I'm Aaron Flynn, CEO here at Inflection Games. I wanted to give you all an important update regarding our early access launch for Nightingale. We mentioned that our update that we keep you informed of our progress as we work towards addressing key feedback towards our game and ensuring that our early access launch lives up to expectations. After many discussions with our team, we've come to the decision to move our early access launch date to the fall of this year, which is spring if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. The reason for the release date shift is simple. The playtest process is working. The feedback we've been receiving from players has been invaluable and the extra time will allow us to continue the progress we've been making while not jeopardizing the health of our team. There are a number of things we want to do with this extra time, from quality of life improvements like crafting bench animations, to tuning and progression and pacing, to continuing to work to make the realms feel as mystical and amazing as they can be. That said, this will still be an early access launch, so we want to keep the process of feedback and iteration between us and our community going even as we're live. Another thing we'll be doing with this time is upgrading to Unreal Engine 5.2, we were very excited by some of the updates that were shown off by Epic, but previously there wasn't a good time for us to fit this update in. While we aren't delaying specifically for this upgrade, we will have time now to do it, and that'll pass all those really cool new features on through Nightingale onto you, our community. Now, I understand this isn't necessarily the update you were looking for, and I really appreciate your patience as we continue the journey towards Nightingale. Over the next few months, we'll continue to prioritize playtesting and listening to community feedback, and we'll come back to you with an exact release date sometime later in the summer. I'll now hand it back to Steph and Maribel to talk a little bit more about what we're working on and show you some of the cool things we've added since we last talked. Okay, right. Well, this seems to be a good stopping point because they're about to move on over to other members, but oh my days. Have you guys seen Unreal, Unreal Engine 5.2? So it does a lot more with foliage rendering and it, it does a lot more with procedural stuff as well. Now, considering that this is a procedural game, I'm hoping that they're going to take advantage of some of the new procedural elements when it comes to placement and making things feel believable in a procedurally generated landscape. Oh, th th I'm so glad that they've taken the time out to move to 5.2. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'd hit up, I put some videos inside of the actual video description if you want to see Unreal Engine 5.2 and why I'm excited for that. And the fact that they say that they're going to keep, they're extending this till um, the autumn of this year, you know, we've got quite a fair few large titles dropping this year already, and uh, I think it's probably a good thing that they are doing that if they feel it needs the extra polish. And also, they're listening to their community and community feedback and extending their beta and alpha testing of, of said game. So, you know, I think that's good too. They're listening to their community. They understand that it needs a bit more work before it goes out there into the world. They're not just doing a cyberpunk or a previous no man's sky and building the rocket on the way to the actual moon they're actually making sure that the rocket's going to make it there <laughs> which i like anyway let's jump back in and let's continue watching this because this is this is pretty good stuff isn't it okay here we go play thank you aaron since we've mentioned how valuable these play tests have been for us we want to give you a little update on the next one we previously mentioned that we were going to do a playtest at the end of May, but this has been bumped back a week or two just due to some technical hiccups. With that said, we have bumped it up from 7,000 invites to closer to 10,000 or 12,000 new people on top of the previous 2,000 or so. 
While this amount won't cover all of you who filled out the survey, as there were over 50,000 of you, it is a significant chunk. So make sure that you're checking your inbox and your spam over the next couple of weeks here. And if you want to know the exact day that the invites are being sent, make sure that you join our Discord. We'll put the link in the description. These invites will come from someone with the playnightingale.com domain name. So make sure that you're double checking to make sure that the invite is legitimate and safe. This next playtest will be the longest one to date as it will cover both two full weekends as well as all of the weekdays in between. We're hoping that this will let more playtesters get into later game content and give more feedback on those areas. As with previous playtests, this will be a closed one, so don't expect any videos or streams of it just yet, but we will try to share some insights when it's all completed and done. Okay, so <laughs> back to me for a moment. I'm going to do this each section. Don't worry, the next section is a big one by the looks of things. But wow. So there's a new playtest session. It's been moved forward a week, so perhaps the first week of June then, because it was going to happen at the end of May. Oh, that's exciting stuff. So hopefully we're going to see another development update shortly then on after the next closed playtest. And hopefully we get more feedback in the way that they've been moving the game forward. But it looks like we're just about to get a game update now. Actual things that have happened inside of game from the last playtest session, which I think came to a close early May. So yeah, can't wait to hear what Maribel has got to say. So let's just jump straight back on over and let's hit a play on there. Now let's talk about some of the things that have been implemented in the game. Something that was frustrating the team for a few months was texture corruption. Although sometimes on screen it looked pretty actually and made the game feel a bit psychedelic. But that wasn't quite the intended aesthetic. And sometimes it snapped players out of the experience, which is something we do not want to do. Luckily the workaround was just to close and relaunch the game, but obviously that was just a temporary solution. We didn't want that to be the way it was. But we're happy to say that this has been fixed and we haven't seen the issue since. The other major issue from this last playtest was that players were having an increased amount of graphic crashes. But we've been testing this out a lot internally to see what the cause was, and luckily our team has identified one of the problems. And we've already seen a 50 to 70% decrease in GPU crashes with this workaround. But we're working with external parties on all fronts, such as Epic and graphics card manufacturers, to fully resolve the issue. Because uh, it wasn't just one thing that was causing the GPU crashes, it was um, a blend of different factors. So now let me talk about some of the things that we've added to Nightingale. So in Nightingale you use workbenches for different things. You could craft things or you could refine certain materials. Workbenches themselves can be upgraded by placing compatible decorations nearby. And the bench contains a fixed amount of upgrade slots that the decorations take up. So unique combinations of decorations selected in this way create distinct traits for that bench. You could get an awesome buff due to these combinations or you can even get consequences. We've also added later game benches that have increased capacity for upgrades. They have specific workbench traits that allows for higher tier items. They have faster refinements and new recipe unlocks. We also introduced environmental traits which can further buff or debuff your workbench. So for example, the bench can get a sheltered trait if it has a roof overhead, which would in turn allow it to refine faster. Or your tool bench could get the wet stone trait if you place the appropriate decoration nearby, giving any bladed tool crafted on that bench a boost in damage. But as I said before, not all traits give you a positive effect, so you really have to think about how you're going to set up your crafting area. So it's up to you as a player what setup works best for you and your playstyle. To improve your understanding of the state of your crafting bench at a glance, we also added new UI icons. So these will indicate how much fuel you have left, uh, your crafting setup, and how many slots, upgrade slots you've used. Creatures. Before we get into creatures, I just want to I just want to comment on that. You know, now, something that the previous playtest sort of fed back in was that sometimes it takes a little while to fell a tree. So, you know, you might well have to hit a big tree like 12 times before it actually falls. And that's quite a, an ask, really, to resource gathering or even hit a rock maybe 12 times to split it and get your ore. But if you can make better axes, better pickaxes that do more damage, I'm hoping that means 
quicker resource time. So rather than hitting it 12 times to fell a tree or smash a rock, hopefully it's going to be like eight. And then maybe you should get a better workbench and move on or even put on better like um, accessories to your workbench to give it perks. Hopefully I give mine a perk and not make it worse. <laughs> yeah, which would probably be my luck, you know, when I get into game if I ever do, which would be like, nice, <laughs> I guess. Then maybe, maybe we might be able to get it even lower than that. So yeah, this all sounds good. This sounds very good. Okay, let's jump back over. One of my favorite things in the game. We've added a few um, and I'm so thrilled that I get to talk to you about these. Some have already been introduced, maybe shown a little bit, uh, some glimpses in our socials for those. Yeah, I saw a shorts video of like this really colorful, weird dog thing. Yeah, it was quite cool. Yeah, it had a weird sort of hammerhead shaped head. Let, let's see if it comes up. For you that have missed it, here are um, some of the new tr creatures that we've added in the realms. We have the Hexam Mongrel. This is one of my favorites. And the Elephas, a particular favorite of our art director, Neil Thompson, can now be found in the desert. A new addition to the Swamp Realm is the Liporidon. And if you're not a fan oh. of bugs, trust me, I'm not either. <laughs> you could pause the video now and skip to the timestamp in the description. But for those of you that want to see the creepy crawlies, the Caparis, the oh. Legionist, and the Selkit can now be found in the desert. We'll be sharing some more information on these critters in the upcoming weeks on our socials, so make sure that you follow us. All the links will be in the description down below. <laughs> Slutamondo Maribel. I love the way she signs out. And that's out. everything for this little update. Thank you all so much once again for your patience and understanding. Game development isn't easy, but your enthusiasm and your support really makes a difference. We know you want to see more of Nightingale, so Heck we yeah. have plenty of content planned for the coming months. Brilliant! Keep an eye on all of our channels, and we'll keep you up to date. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time. Sweet. Bye. Nice one. Well, there you go, people. You know, I am I am thoroughly vested in this one, as you know, peeps. I'm, I'm really excited for this one, mainly because of the procedural element and things like that. But there's a lot more to it than that, too. You know, I'm... Let's have a look, see if I can... Unreal... That's pretty... Uh, I, Unreal 5.2. I know I said I put a link in the video description, but I watched a really good video on this just the other day. Um, it just popped up. It started playing. I think I think this is it. Yeah, look, I've got a red bar on this one. I've watched all of this. This is so cool. Some of the stuff in here that I think that they can take advantage of. The second major update for Unreal Engine 5 just released called 5.2. And there are two reasons why it is a big deal. They are procedural content generation exactly. and substrate materials. Exactly. Procedural content generation is a powerful tool that allows you to use random generation to create complex models and environments. A little bit like what we hope the Super Formula would do in No Man's Sky. You can see there that it actually morphs wireframes and things like that. Very excited for this. And now this is the video that I want to put inside of the actual video description for you guys to go hit up. Um, I don't really want to put too much inside of this actual video. Um, I don't know whether I get flagged or striked for doing so. But um, let's just skip it on just a little bit because there's all sorts in here about how you can use tools inside of this to improve things. That's where he puts in a shed load of trees and it's like procedurally placed trees. But there's a better demonstration that he does of this a little bit later on where he starts building out these like um, oases so you know what if I turn the volume off that's probably gonna make it less likely to get flagged and I'll just talk over the top of it so basically he set up his own sort of like workflow with all those boxes no scripting needed link them all together and you can just expand this and stretch it however you wish and it's just going to put in this massive great big oasis wherever he stretches it or places it or if he places it where there's like a little bit of a crevice or a bit of a dip it even puts in ponds and lakes and all sorts of other shenanigans going on there which just makes sort of making a, a, a landscape far easier but not only that when you couple it with the procedural world generation you can add in workflows that make sense to the terrain and where you want things to spawn and what patterns you're going to have and oh it, it just looks freaking so awesome now i used to use unreal editor back in the unreal sort of um days you know i used to play unreal tournament i used to make levels for unreal tournament but this editor has come, has come such a way since then it looks far more complicated than what i was used to but this looks freaking great so there's a lot in here about procedure i mean look, this is where i was on you know he puts a path through here but in a moment it, it actually puts in lakes and little rivers and things like that for him too i mean look at that 
And it, it, Unreal Engine 5 is making it so much easier for the developers, but not only that, it's making it so much easier for the AI inside of the engine in a roundabout way when it comes to placing things procedurally. And I'm hoping that when we go through the realms with inside of them, um, Nightingale, we're going to see that sort of happen. Now, another thing that it's done is it's added in layers that you can add on top. Now, with the new 5.2, you can see that the dirt upgrade on that actual metal casing there, that's previous, and then when it does 5.2, now, that's how it looks now. It has added so much more grime to it, hasn't it? Made it look a lot more realistic. So layering's far better. The lighting effects and how lighting actually bounces, rather than having virtual shadow maps, it actually uses lumen to actually predict where shadows would fall and makes much more softer shadows and it doesn't matter how far out you zoom out anymore the shadows don't disappear so yeah it's a lot more realistic ray traced shadows that's if your hardware can handle it but yeah <laughs> unreal engine 5.2 has bringing so much more into the mix and i can't wait to see what this does inside of the nightingales universe and inside of the realms i mean this guy's actually made demo videos on how you can build this little area that he's got here so if you are interested in getting involved in unreal engine 5 and, and developing it this is a great place to go however also sky masters over in the no man's sky universe is trying to make a no man's sky planet inside of unreal engine 5 and he's a beginner and his videos are pretty good a lot of it though is him sort of struggling with the editor and getting used to it but then you know, he struggles so you don't have to, so you can watch the end result of him struggling. It's a good little playlist. Hit on up Sky Masters if you haven't already. But yeah, awesome stuff inside of this um, this um, this this channel here. So that's Unreal Sensei. Let me just make it a little bit larger on the screen here. I hit pause on there because I don't really want that going off in the background. But he's got lots and lots of like um, beginner's gu guides to making your own game even inside of the engine. So yeah, hit it up, take a quick look, see. But for the, all the latest news on Unreal Engine, and what it brings into the verse. I mean, you can see here I've watched a few of them when it comes to the, what Unreal Engine can do because there's a fair few games coming to next-gen console that use the Unreal Engine and it's, it's always a good idea to keep yourself you know, informed about this sort of stuff, people inside the Viewerverse, or at least, at least I think it is anyway, people. Anyways, so there we go. I think I've banged on enough, but I am thoroughly excited for Nightingale and I'm extremely excited for Unreal Engine 5.2. And to hear that Nightingale is going to make use of it is just it's mind-blowingly good. I know that there's a delay there. There is a delay until autumn, but then Nightingale and the team haven't actually set in stone a release date, so it's it's not really a disappointment. Not like when you've got release dates in videos. <coughs> Starfield. <laughs> well, I mean, that hasn't happened, has it? You know, so I think they're okay to move the goalposts because they didn't really set them in concrete, did they? You know, so there we go, people. That's my feeling on it all. Love to hear your feeling. Sound off in the comments. Are you excited for Nightingale? I know it's coming to PC only on launch. We can only but hope that it's a, a sterling success, and I'm hoping that maybe if it is, they might consider bringing it to the next-gen consoles such as PlayStation 5. Could you imagine if it came to PlayStation VR 2? I mean, it is all first-person. It would be perfect for VR. It really would. But anyway, people... Um, I mean, that's everything I've got for you today and as you can see I am excited for this game um, until next time goodbye goodbye and goodbye again